If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash BCC. That's joinhoney.com slash BCC. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Welcome to the chain. Welcome to the BCC Club. We are your hosts, Kendall Landreth and Sarah Shower. And we will be talking about the weirdest parts of the internet. And at the end of each episode, we do have a special guest Ooh. from that weird part of the internet that we're going to interview. And today we have an incredible special guest and an incredible topic, which is clean talk. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to... If you're watching this on YouTube, we do have chapters. So if you'd like to skip ahead, you absolutely can. <laughs> There's, yes. Um, so today we will be talking about clean talk. But before that, Kendall, how was your week? My week mm -hmm. was great. Hell it yeah. was a good week. I know I told you about the cat I had last time. You don't have a cat anymore? I don't have a cat anymore. It was a good, it was a good thing. She was a stray cat. She needed a home during the storm. We mm -hmm. took her in. She had a wonderful life. I just spoiled her. But ultimately, her and my dog wish each other were dead. And so we had to give her to our two friends who are just an adorable couple and are so sweet and are obsessed with the cat. It actually ended up working out perfectly. But mm -hmm. that's the update. I do not have a cat. I'm really sorry. So why did the week go great? <laughs> well, I was, well, you know, I was so relieved. I was like, we're going to have to just keep this cat in our lives. We'll be terrible. Yeah. Not because of her, but mostly because of my dog. They were mm -hmm. like fighting. And they would make each other so anxious that both of them would be, like, simultaneously growling and peeing at the same time. Like, it was so bad. <laughs> um, and I did – I really did do all the research of, like, how to integrate a dog and a cat together. And I really tried to, like, do all the steps. And it felt like they were just, like, absolutely not. Um, so I was very stressed out. And it worked out absolutely perfectly. Like, the couple that it, the cat mm -hmm. ended up going to is just, like, the sweetest. And they're going to be so good to the cat. So that was a delight. Nice. That was good. What nice. about you? How was your week? Um, I did an open mic on Sunday. Oh my God, how'd it go? It was awful. Oh no. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, is that phenomenon that we talked about, like it was an open mic so only comedians are in the audience? Yeah. I used the term comedian so loosely. It was like a pub, like a straight bar. Yeah. And there were several comedians, male comedians, that asked female audience members what they watch porn-wise. Mm -hmm. um, what their fetish is. One guy asked a girl if she uses a rose vibrator, and it wasn't like there was, it was just like interviewing. It wasn't even no, like it's funny. Like comedy, yeah. But there, um, I was talking to my friend about it, and she was like, Well, did you at least get to do crowd work? And I was like, No, because the crowd was, I, okay. So there was this male comedian on the stage, and he was like, yeah, so my bitch got an abortion recently. Oh, my God. I know. And so a lady in the crowd goes, Saturday night. And he goes, did you get an abortion on Saturday night? And she said, no, I went to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. And you said, get her up on stage. Yes. Wait a minute, she's awesome. <laughs> she is out of her mind. Give her a mic. But there was um, another lady who I thought was really funny because she was just screaming at the top of her lungs the entire time about how her ex-husband couldn't get her off and how she went into the middle of the desert and fucked herself with a rock. But when I mean screaming the entire oh, time. Oh my God. Yeah. And then that I, is so alarming. I really want to do a character that's like male stand up comedians at an open mic because I'm always amazed every time I've been to an open mic or even honestly just a show. Yeah. Where they're like, I'm a professional stand up comedian. Some of them I'm shocked will have like Netflix specials. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. And they go up there, they do not tell a single joke. They put their foot up against the wall and they're like, oh man, what's a funny thing to say? What's a funny thing to say? Um. I hate my wife. Yeah. And then everyone laughs and they're like, what else? What else? And I'm like, this is not a joke. There's no yeah. jokes you've not even said. It's not about me not liking. Oh, I'm sorry. My phone did a little ding. Whoa. Oopsie. Um, it's not even about me not liking your joke. You just haven't said 
a joke yeah. yet. Oh, no, yeah, there were definitely male comedians, males on stage who were like, why aren't you laughing? This is funny. Oh, my gosh. And, like, how you, like, there's so many old jokes that, like, people have used, uh, jokes very loosely, used, like, a million times. Yeah. Like, this one guy was like, I have a friend who's a trans woman, and I want her to transition sooner so I can motorboat her. <gasps> and I was like, <coughs> that hurt my you voice. Said, that was awesome. <laughs> I was like, I know that you have never met a trans 100%. woman in your entire life or a trans person ever. And you know those are always the people who fight with each other about stealing each other's jokes too. Yeah. They're like, their joke is the most general. Well, that one you told wasn't too general. That was just more disturbing. Yeah. But some of them will be so general and they're just saying things like, oh, my girlfriend loves me to take her on dates. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And then they will be getting in Twitter fights with each other being like, this guy stole my stuff. It's the same on TikTok. You'll see people be like, they stole my content. You'll go watch the video they're talking about and it's just them being like, so this is a character of a person who goes to school. Yeah. And it's like the most general. <laughs> You're like, you yeah. did, nobody stole your content. You're just all like making very general content. Yeah. I think I haven't gotten any sort of comments that are like, you stole this joke because mine are so specifically disturbing. If someone stole your content, it would be very clear. It would be abundantly clear. <laughs> they would have to be like, I'm Sarah Shower, <laughs> yes. and here's a very personal story about my <laughs> so, sex life. I lost my virginity the day Michael Jackson died. <laughs> hmm, who else? No, but, and then I um, I have, I'm auditioning for um, a stand-up spot in a show, like a oh, spot in a show. I, I met a host of a comedy show and she's like, I have watched your stuff and you're very funny and I do trust that you've done stand-up before but I'd like to see you do like a yeah. quick set because you don't have any actual footage. Yeah. And I was like, that is true. Yeah. You know, like I have yeah. no proof that I've stood up. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm sitting in all my videos. <laughs> she wants a video of me standing up and sitting down. <laughs> she's like, all right, I'll bite. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was very funny. That's very funny. Let me look up. Can I look at my calendar and see what else I did this week? Yeah, go ahead. That's psychotic. I feel like I have no memory. If you were like, what did you do yesterday? I'd be like, I have absolutely no recollection. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I feel like my weeks are just packed at this point. Let me think about what else yeah. I did. Yeah. That's all. I really didn't. Now this is just sad. I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, all I did was work. I did nothing interesting. And I, um, yeah. My life isn't very interesting. I'm so sorry. Did you decorate for Women's History Month? Yes, I did. I put, I put a bunch of, Photos of women all over my room. Yeah. <laughs> I put my woman tree up. <laughs> yeah, it's a very woman tree up. <laughs> it's just a mannequin from Forever 21 that I put Christmas lights around. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up for the month of March. But um, um, this is your favorite woman. Oh, um, sorry. Oh, no. I cut you off, but I had to know. <laughs> favorite woman um, who's someone deeply disturbing. Mm. I don't know. Who's your favorite woman? Trisha Paytas. Really? <laughs> There's no way. She's oh, top, Jennifer Coolidge is my favorite woman. Oh my god, I love Jennifer Coolidge. I just watched a movie yesterday. It was Shotgun Wedding mm -hmm. with Jennifer Coolidge. She was incredible. She's, she's incredible. So good. And I feel like she's having a real Betty White moment where it was like she She's the end is near. Yeah, she's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, she like cuz Betty White was always famous, but people oh, yeah, didn't yeah. really like her. Like when she was young, they're like, "Oh, so who cares?" And then when she turned like 60, I feel like she really aged into her comedy where yeah. it was like her comedy is made for someone who's an old older person. And I feel like the same thing with Jennifer Coolidge. It was like we always loved her, but now she's like iconic there's all so, of a sudden. Yeah, there's something about an incredibly old person that you like again. Mm -hmm. You know, like from like, this doesn't make sense, but on social media, like 1 to 30 is like people think that that's a normal age to be online. And then anything beyond 30 to 55. All right, I'm not saying that I believe this. People <laughs> are, a lot of the comments are like, why are you online? You should be online. Yeah. But then like the audience that's okay with the under 30 crowd, they love someone who's over 65. Yes. Yeah. And the, the, I was like, being old must be incredible on the internet because you can literally say anything and you'll go viral. Like if uh -huh. you're 75 years old and you're just like, my husband's a piece of shit. He hasn't fucked me in 20 years. Yeah. They'll be like, career. This you have a career. <laughs> full career. You're incredible. It's wild. And Jennifer Coolidge, it's like I think her her character was harder to cast as like a 20-year-old. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that, like in Legally Blonde, that's like such a specific character. But it's like hard to have that in every movie. But now her character is just so like, we want that old woman in any movie. She's not an old woman, but you yeah. know, an, an older woman. We want that woman in every single movie. She could be worked into any movie. Just like a crazy older woman. Yeah. It's so fun. That's true. 
Oh, by the way, guys, we had a meeting with YouTube yesterday. <laughs> and for all of you watching on YouTube, please subscribe and like this video. The YouTube rep, very lovely woman, told us to prompt you guys to do that. So do that right now, please. 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 Hi there. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a millennial. I see a deal and I have to act. Gen Z, you're above it. You know you're being sold to, but I see something pink and shiny and I, and I just am over the moon. You know what I mean? And I feel like finding a coupon, yes, I say coupon because I'm from the South, is exciting. You know, I'm going to save money. I'm not really because I'm buying something. Had I not bought something in the first place, I would have saved money that way. You know, potato, potato. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shop shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Picture this. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. So Honey has saved me a lot of money in the past. I'm a huge decorator. I bought a lot of shelves. I actually bought... <laughs> The chair you hear me sitting on right now with a Honey coupon code. It was originally $120, but with Honey, I managed to save $30. And I was jazzed. I was just, it's pink. It rolls around. its It's got a gold base. You can see it in your mind's eye. And Honey was super easy to use. I just clicked apply coupon and I, I saved money. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash BCC. That's joinhoney.com slash BCC. There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment, expecting to be the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. One time I had this happen at a gynecology appointment, and it was deeply upsetting. I was laying down, my legs were in the stirrups, I was fully exposed, and instead of listening to me intently and asking me how I felt, my doctor was checking the clock. That really stuck with me. But on ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. I know it is absolutely exhausting finding a new doctor. That's why until a couple months ago, I still used my childhood dentist, and I would just drive seven hours to my hometown for an annual cleaning every single year. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. But do you think that we should get into this week's topic? Yes, because I love this week's topic. Mm -hmm. It is clean talk and clean talk. Oh, wait, we got to do a segue. Okay. Speaking of YouTube, mm -hmm. YouTube really likes clean content. Yes. They will oh. um, demonetize you if there's way too many curse words. So let's put some Clorox wipes on it. Uh huh. Today's episodes about clean talk yes <laughs> um i love clean talk i'm obsessed with clean talk it changed my life i used to really struggle with cleaning because i've, I've adhd and also i'm lazy mm -hmm. and i now am one of the cleanest people i know i love cleaning i'm a person who even when i put my new sheets on my bed i'm like ironing them onto the bed i'm making everything look perfect you iron your sheets i do everything looks incredible in my house I have all the hacks every single day. If you go to my sink, there's a little mini Ziploc bag with vinegar in it soaking the faucet uh -huh. head. Like I am really, it changed my life. I've become a fully different person. My mom is always amazed because I was very dirty as a teenager. Yeah. Like most teenagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really won't let that go. She's always like, who are you? I'm like, well, I was 16 when I lived with you. But 
now she's always like, this is insane. You clean constantly. Yeah. I love cleaning. It's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. It's my Legos. Yeah. No, I feel <laughs> that. I was very dirty as a kid, but sorry. So sad. The only reason why I didn't clean the house as much is because I was afraid of my family. So I did want to be yeah. outside my room. Oh, no. <laughs> so like, I need a pile of trash to hide behind. <laughs> yes. But So I would always stockpile stuff in my room so I wouldn't have to go outside. Oh, but, sorry, man. it's fine. Oh, Sarah, it hurts. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, no. Um, but, yeah, I'm very clean now. I enjoy cleaning. Like, the first part of my day is just, like, tidying everything up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had to set boundaries with myself because I, when I was first beginning to really enjoy cleaning, I would, like, not work. Yeah. Especially because I work from home. So when I'm in my home, I'm like, well, I'll start work once I've deep cleaned the entire house. Yeah. And I, my house always looked incredible, but no one came over because I didn't have time to make plans with anyone because I was cleaning. And also yeah. I didn't do any work. and It was terrible. Well, maybe you could invite people over and give them a mop. That <laughs> is clean. true. Yes. That's true. I kind of did that. I got a cleaner briefly. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it wasn't worth my money because I was so nervous for her to come over and judge me that I would like deep clean the house before she got there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then she would come and she'd be like, what do you want me to clean? And I'd be like, or, oh, the house is so dirty. Just like anything because I wanted her to be like, this woman has such a clean house. Yeah. And then I was like, this is a complete waste of money. I should just stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we're going to talk about clean talk and what it is. So Clean Talk is a part of TikTok where creators share cleaning and organizing videos. Hashtag Clean Talk has 65.9 billion views on TikTok. Wow. And shows like Get Organized and The Home Edit and Tidying Up with Marie Kondo may have contributed to Clean Talk and the interest in cleaning and organization. I know that Marie Kondo got into this like scandal recently because she had three children and she was like, oh, honestly... <laughs> I don't care anymore about what the house looks like. And everyone's like, isn't that ironic? And she's like, I'm overwhelmed. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Like, when I was single with no children, yeah, I could organize my yeah. life like that. But now there's three children everywhere. I thought you were going to say she got into a scandal because she has three kids and she realized one of them does not spark joy. And so <laughs> yes. she ultimately put them up for adoption. Yes. And that is really bad. <laughs> um, I love Marie Kondo. I'm sorry she had children. <laughs> but... I really am inspired by her. And the biggest point of contention of my girlfriend and I's relationship is that she's more of a, a maximalist. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much a minimalist. I thought Marie Kondo gets rid of stuff. She does. And that's what I enjoy. Oh, so your girlfriend my, is a maximalist. My girlfriend, they much prefer to like have a very... It's not messy. They're not mm. messy at all. But they just love a lot of things. Like they love trinkets. Like if they, they collect a lot of things, um, which is very cool. Mm hmm I would prefer my house look like a museum pottery barn. Yeah. Yeah. Like I when people make fun of Kim Kardashian's house, you I've always it. secretly really loved her house. <laughs> you take it so personal. Yeah, you're really personal. You're like in the comments, like, you don't know her. <laughs> people have different styles. Come on. Come on. She's awesome. I like really love it. I'm like, because I really my mom growing up. Sorry, I'm really going on a tangent, but my mom growing up, she sold a lot of our stuff. At garage sales, we had a garage sale like every other weekend to buy your Christmas presents. Because <laughs> she said we gotta do yes. Christmas big. <laughs> but we well we downsized. At one point, we lived in a really big house. We rented mm -hmm. a big house, and then we downsized into like a really tiny house, which mm -hmm. I actually loved. I like didn't want to. I didn't like having a big house, but it we had to sell all this stuff, and then it just kind of got us on this kick where we were just like having garage sales all the time. We were like, do you know you can make five hundred dollars at a garage sale every weekend? Like that's incredible. And so it just kind of was this thing where I got very used to like if I didn't use if I hadn't used something in three months, I got rid of it. Yeah. I, and I now as an adult really appreciate that uh, ability that I have because it is like mm -hmm. I know a lot of people really struggle with it. Yeah. And I love to get rid of stuff. Now I'm just trying to work on getting rid of stuff while also not being very wasteful. Yes. But I, I, uh, I'm i good at getting rid of stuff, which I appreciate. No, I do understand that. Like, um, besides my Legos, you can pretty much steal from me and I probably <laughs> wouldn't notice or care. But, like, when I moved from South Carolina to California, like, I didn't... Ugh. I didn't want to pay the moving cost of like yeah. shipping my stuff across the US. So I just like every, I got fired and then I had like a lot of free weeks. Yeah. So every single day I'd take like a bunch of shit from my house and just drop it off at this women's shelter. <laughs> I and love that. Eventually I went there so many times that the lady who ran the shelter pulled me aside and she's like, hey, are you thinking about hurting yourself? And I was like, no, why? And she's like, what you're doing is what people do before they, right before yeah. they 
end it all. And I was like, oh no, I just lost my job. I'm as happy as could be. And I was like, I'm moving to California. That is so funny. That poor woman probably for weeks was like graveling with this. No, like, oh my God, this person is going to kill himself. That is so funny. I mean, I had a similar, I think the garage sales as a kid. And then as an adult, I lived in New York and I moved constantly mm-hmm. for various reason, reasons. reasons. Mm-hmm. And, um, because of that, I was like, I when I was moving at like 18, I would be carrying my stuff from apartment to apartment individually in a little box on the subway. Yeah. So everything really counted. Like I was not about to carry something across New York City that I like didn't really care about. Yeah. So it made it to where I really just had like 10 objects that were very important to me and then a lot of clothes. But I, yeah, I, I was like, I'm not going to carry this. So I would just throw out insane things. Like I would throw out, there's a piece of furniture that I liked, but I was like, it's fine. I don't want to go. On the, I don't want to carry it on the subway for yeah. two hours. I would just toss it. Yeah. It's really bad. That is. <laughs> and crazy because at the time I really couldn't afford a new one. So yeah. I would just be like, no more side tables, yes. I guess. My hands are tied. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, but there are different types of clean talk videos. There's cleaning and organizing tips, product recommendations, before and after transformations, clean with me, reset with me videos, cleaning ASMR restocks um which is storing away organizing new purchases into bins and then complete it's labeled complete disaster i'm not labeling these but like hoarding crime biohazard cleanups yeah. is a part of clean talk that also exists my favorite ones are the reset with me mm-hmm. i love those videos because they're very satisfying to me yeah to see them and it's so funny because the people don't move their houses like there's this one girl who'll be like reset my eight-year-old's bedroom with me yeah i've seen her reset this child's bedroom like 700 times and it's always the same thing i'm like now she's gonna put the roku remote on top of the ipad and then she's gonna clean the ipad and then she's gonna put his there's one kid who's a a little boy she's oh then he puts the the whole cans onto the side table like i just know where everything goes and i'm like it's crazy that i've watched this so many times yeah i know the ins and outs of this child's room no, yeah, I um, I've seen a lot of the biohazard ones. Sometimes Ooh. I get frustrated because my TikToks will be taken down because I said like "fuck" too many times, and then like the video I see beneath it after it's being taken down is this person was found deceased in their apartment, and their body had disintegrated into the floor, and the TikTok clean talker is filming the skin that is still stuck to the floor, and with their gloved hand they peel up gam gam. And they're like, look at this. This is a 70-year-old woman's epidermis. And I'm like, so I said fuck twice. And there's a melted grandma that gets to stay up. Yeah. You know? And it's so fucked up. Because it's still like ASMR. Yeah. Where they're like still have like this. They slowly, (laughs) quietly peel the skin of grandma off the floor of the apartment. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Uh Oh, it's so scary. There's a lot of popular clean talk influencers. I felt really like wow I am in this world when I read this list because I follow every single one of these people oh you do I am and know that like if you ask me who my favorite TikToker is I always say Kat Ben Mm -hmm. and I've said it for Kat Ben yeah that's her name Kat Ben I followed her since the very beginning of TikTok her and I are mutual (laughs) okay and I am obsessed with her and I if I had all the money in the world I would go on her Amazon wish list or not wish list her Amazon storefront And I would purchase every single item she has. I would would purchase it all. And it's so funny because she is like a, I'm pretty sure like a Midwestern mother. Mm -hmm. And her space reflects that. Like she seems like a Midwestern mother. And I'm like in my 20s, lesbian in Los Angeles. And I'm like, I wish my house looked exactly like hers. Like I am obsessed with it. Um, So there's Clean with Nessa. Wait, oh, sorry. Now it's Clean. ASMR content. Mm -hmm. Clean with Nessa. 3.8 3.8 million followers. Vanessa Amaro, 91, who I'm pretty sure, let me click. Let me make sure I'm correct. I'm pretty sure has a big sponsorship with, yes, I'm right, has a huge sponsorship with Scrub Daddy. Oh, yeah. Who I'm obsessed with Scrub Daddy. And I, I'm i not a person who reaches out to brands ever. Uh-huh. Since I have been on TikTok, I've reached out to Scrub Daddy probably 70 times and been like, please sponsor me. Yeah. Please, I, you don't even have to pay me. Just send me your new Christmas line of sponges Mm -hmm. and every time they send me a DM back that links me to their store and it is really devastating every single time. I feel that. I have that same thing with uh, Sour Warheads. (laughs) 
So like, that would um, be a great brand deal for you. I know. So like, what I uh, why I like Sour Warheads so much is if you're having a really bad panic attack. And you need something to like shock your senses, but you don't have medication. Pop a sour warhead, and the sourness is so overwhelming to your senses that it distracts you from the panic attack. So I've like messaged warheads like over the years, like, hey, this would be a really great campaign, you know? And they're like, Sarah, we've told you this time and time again. We cannot claim medical results or even allude to it if it, they are not proven. And I was like, but come on. It's I also funny- love that you're like, then I don't want to do a, yeah. I don't want to do a partnership. Then. <laughs> yes. Cause if I'm not speaking my truth, then I'm not going to do it. But that's my pitch because I have like an entire like sketch around that idea. And they're just like, it's, you're promising something that's like mental health. And I'm like, Okay, whatever, tell her what. But it's true. I mean, it's the same reason people shove their face in a bowl of ice. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. It's the same exact thing. Um, yeah, I love Scrub Daddy. Vanessa Amaro, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, 91. She has a, a, a brand new with them. And she does free cleanings, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. that's gone viral for her doing that, which is so nice. Um, Mom that loves to clean, Kaylee May, who I also follow. And it's so amazing because they all have the same stuff Mm -hmm. like all of them for the most part have the same exact products the same exact they organize everything in the same exact way if i'm correct i might be thinking of someone else but i think kaylee may has a coffee bar Mm -hmm. either her or midwestern mama but i'm not really sure which one one of them has a coffee bar and they uh every single week like restock their coffee bar and it has like every candy you could imagine all the syrups it looks like a starbucks it's like incredible Mm -hmm. and i love it so much yeah, I love that mom that loves to clean. It says that she posts recipes for combining cleaning products because I know like in the past we have talked about how basically people are like amateur cleaners and they make mustard gas in their yeah. toilet and they're like, I don't know why I can't see. And it's like, well, you did just mix like you made like a bomb. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. And it's so wild, too, because it'll be in their toilet and people will like do suggestions or they'll be like, do a green one. Yeah. Please do a pride themed toilet. Yes. The and pride doing... themed toilet is literally poison. And they're just putting like a rainbow. Yeah. All the cleaners you can imagine. And I am like, I know how much you make on tic- in the TikTok creator fund. There is no way you're profiting off of this. If ever, because they'll pour a whole thing of cleaning solution uh-huh. like into the and I feel like when I go to the store and buy cleaning supplies and have to like restock, it costs like two hundred dollars because yeah. every single cleaning product is like nine ninety nine. I'm like every time you make a video, you buy two hundred dollars worth of cleaning supplies and then just dump it in your toilet. You need to get into couponing. I bet that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I bet that's what, they should be making couponing content. Yes. There's also not the worst cleaner who's a professional cleaner and does free cleanings for people struggling with mental health and living in messy homes, which is really nice. And then there's the folding lady. Uh, She does (laughs) folding hacks, laundry tips, closet organization. I love the idea that she's cornered the market for folding. Yes. You know, like someone like starts like you have like uh, you're ironing your bed sheets where you have like only ironing content and you you fold something once and she's like, all right. (laughs) You're copying my content. <laughs> Please. I do that. All my contents are, all my, all my, oh my God, let me start mm. over. All my comments are like, tag the original creator, tag mm. the folding lady if you're going to steal her content. But what are some benefits of Clean Talk, Kendall? I think a ton. Mm-hmm. I don't even read the reasons. Yes. I just tell you. <laughs> you a know bunch. it from memory. A bunch. Yes. Um, clean Talk may motivate people to clean their home, their own homes. Watching others clean might help viewers feel vicariously in control. One study from the National Library of Medicine showed that the more clutter in someone's line of sight, the more likely they are to be stressed out. The sight of a clean and organized home can help people unwind and de-stress, I guess even if it's not their own home, even if they're just watching someone's clean home. Mm -hmm. Clutter can make it difficult to focus and complete tasks efficiently. Clutter and mess are linked to negative emotions like confusion. (laughs) I don't know why that makes me laugh. (laughs) Just being so confused. Your house is so messy. Like, where am I? This cannot be my house. Um... Tension and irritability. An organized home tends to produce more positive emotions like calmness and a sense of well-being. Research has found that cleaning can have a number of positive effects on your mental health. For instance, it helps you gain a sense of control over your environment and engage your mind in a repetitive activity that can have a calming effect. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say like... um... So, like, I think we talked about this before, body doubling for, like, people with ADHD. If you have a hard time cleaning your house, put on a video of someone else cleaning their house. Not, like, sped up, but in real time. And you'll start to, like, do it with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like, anything, 
like I feel like people talk a lot about this with food where they're like don't make like savory salty or like sugary food a reward uh-huh. and don't make like vegetables be like a bad thing and people are realizing that like oh as you like make everything kind of neutral yeah you get excited about healthy food as well mm-hmm. I think it's like similar with cleaning where it's like cleaning has like been such a negative yeah all the time where it's like oh go clean your room a it's like a punishment. Is, like negative yeah. yeah you have to like I never got paid for chores because I didn't really do any chores, to be honest. My mom, <laughs> my mommy did everything for me. How but... sweet. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is just me bragging about how much I love my mom. Your and mom you... <laughs> did all your chores? <laughs> she did. She did do. She did my laundry till I was 18. She did. She loved to care. <laughs> she loved to care for me. That for is really me. sweet, though. Um, And she feels similar now that I'm an adult. I'm like, oh, I'm just like her. And that I would always be like, why would someone care if you did a chore right? Like, why would my mom be so overbearing? Like, because I would try to do the dishes and she'd be like, can you do it like this? And I would get so mad. Like, I'd be like, why do you care? Just let me do my chores. But now with my partner, they'll be like, oh, I'll mop the floors. And I'll be like, please don't. Yeah. That's my thing. And you're going to like, you're going to fuck it up. Like, which is so crazy because they probably would not. It's not that hard. Yes. But um, I feel like chores a negative thing. It's like, oh, you, we have to pay you to do chores yeah. because that's like such a negative thing. And I feel like clean talk has almost made cleaning like a treat where it's like, oh, it's fun to clean. And yeah, like, it's you, satisfying. Yes. And everyone's going on Amazon, Amazon storefronts and buying themselves like cleaning supplies as like a treat. Yes. And I last my last birthday, I asked for a, a carpet vacuum for mm-hmm. my birthday. And that was like I was so excited and I could not wait to get home. I was like, all I want to do on my birthday is just like go home. Well, I went to Vegas, but then after Vegas, I yeah. said, I want to come home and I just want to like vacuum our couch. And so it's become this like positive thing that's like, I have so much fun doing it. Yeah. And I think that's that's awesome. And before it was such like, a, uh, oh, my God, I can't believe I have to go clean my house. No, yeah, I am. Um, I get that. A l- like, I understand that totally. Um, God, what was I going to say? No. OK. I do want to like back put a little bit. I think it is very sweet that your mother did your chores, <laughs> but it just reminded me of something that my brother, my sister and I had to do when my mom was deployed one time. So like in 2004, we lived in California and we had this massive hill behind our house and there was a mudslide and my dad made us all weed the back hill by ourselves. And then we had to like dig a trench um, like a third of the way up the hill and then Jake, Hannah, and I built a fence out of logs. And when it broke because we were children and the mud came down the hill and into the garage again, my dad made us rebuild a wood fence. Oh. And Jake was like 11 years old and I was nine and Hannah was five. <laughs> yes. Wait, was it in your backyard? Yes. Okay, that may- I thought you were saying it was behind your house. And I was like, I think that was probably like a construction site where they were like, oh, no, you shouldn't no, be touching no, this. No. We are supposed to be yeah. doing this. And he's like, no, don't worry. My kids will do it. Just <laughs> yeah. get them out there. That is crazy. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, it was funny. Like, I, I really do. I hate when someone says something really sweet about their parents and someone's like, well, my dad hit me. Wow. I can make that joke. <laughs> um, so- it's our dynamic. It's fun. Yeah. People like it. Yeah, but um, I loved, like, a lot of people think of like cleaning or exercise as like a punishment. Yeah. That's why like they don't like to do it. Um, and for other reasons as well. But um, yeah, I, uh, fuck, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Oh crap. What were you talking about? I was talking about how, <laughs> like, I have no idea. Oh no, yeah. The vacuum. Yes. I, yes. Um, I got one of those vacuums that's like a rug doctor, but I bought it. Oh, yeah. And because my cat has started um, shitting in the corner, like right. underneath where I do my makeup. And turns out the vet told me, like, was is there anything disruptive happening around the litter box that he can't shit? And I was like, oh, we have a fucking loud ass washer. Right, right. So like when the washer is going, he will find a safe place to poop. And so I bought one of those like rug doctors. And so I get really excited when he shits in the corner now because I get so to go over it. and I get to use the, the mud yes. and the dirt and the brown. It's incredible. It's so satisfying. Yes. It is so satisfying. I thought you were going to say that like when you got the vacuum, you went to Vegas and you went inside a casino <laughs> and you're just like, Meh. honestly, that's an incredible idea. <laughs> yes. I would literally love to do that. I'm sure it would just be like, because the sad thing about cleaning sometimes, when you love cleaning <laughs> yeah. so much, is your house is always clean. So yeah. there's never really anything too like satisfyingly clean. You know, I like sometimes yeah. I'll see my roommate's car. Sometimes I get into it and it, it feels rude. <laughs> but I'll like be like, raccoon. can I clean this car? And he's like, no, that's so rude. What do you think my car is dirty? I'm like, it's yeah. so dirty and I love it. Let me clean it, please. <laughs> I do love the idea of going to a casino and while everyone's at the blackjack table, you're like, lift your feet. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. And then you, oops, got a coin. (laughs) Who wants it? Who wants a coin? Oh my gosh. What I really want to do is clean the inside of a smoker's house so bad. Yeah. Well, they have those videos on the the Mm -hmm. internet where they'll be like wiping it. Yeah. And it was like a brown wall and you realize it's like fully a white wall and it's just so scary there are benefits for those with adhd um so watching someone clean organized can be helpful to those with adhd as it simulates body doubling we just talked about this and you do that like you do i've never and i have very severe adhd but i've never done body doubling before have you ever had someone sit in your room while you clean no, I love to be by myself when I clean, but I always turn on something. Like, I always have to have, like, a movie on or a – but I don't watch it or, like, a podcast, but I won't listen to it. I just, like, like having voices mm-hmm. in the room. But I also think, like, most mo- – I think my brain has, like, attached itself to cleaning as, like, a good thing and something fun, so I will, like, hyper-focus on it. Yeah. I think other tasks, I need a lot of help, and I need, like, someone to do it with me. But cleaning, for some reason – I'll, like, clean the whole house because yeah. I just am, like, so focused on it. I get that. So body doubling. We already talked about what it is. It provides accountability and works as a motivator. You're your own accountability partner. I know. I'm incredible. I really just love, But I will watch videos all before bed. We'll search, like, cleaning TikTok compilations on YouTube and watch, like, 45 minutes of someone cleaning their house. Yeah. And it's, like, my favorite thing in the whole world. I fall asleep to, like, Russian dash cam videos. <laughs> you told me. Where people just, like, are destroyed by a semi-truck because they went through a red light. Oh, man. They were, I, don't, I think they were fine. I don't There's know. There's no way they were fine. They'd always cut self off and go to the next video. <laughs> and that made you be like, no, they're probably okay then. Yeah. And then I, I always watch shark attack videos. I love shark attack videos. I feel like that's so niche because, I mean, like, to be filming while you're in the water. Well, they're not. It, it's someone recording the water. It's someone recording a shark attack usually. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be with the person in the water. I want some, I want to see someone's legs just like, ah! I also got into crocodile attacks. Uh-huh. Um, because I thought, or wait, which one's bigger? A crocodile's bigger than an alligator. It really depends on where you are in the world. I thought, like, an alligator and a crocodile were, like, the same thing. And then my girlfriend was like, no, a crocodile is, like, massive and will literally kill an elephant. An alligator is, oh, sorry, I thought you meant crocodile and shark. Yeah, an uh, alligator is usually bigger than a crocodile. Oh, okay. Then the other, then the yeah. other way. One of them is like really scary, and yeah. I was like, "Wait, I'm obsessed with this because I love dinosaurs." Well, you know, I want to be a paleontologist. <laughs> also, yeah. someone, sorry, this is the last thing. We'll get back into clean talk. Someone did DM me. It was the sweetest DM. I, I don't yeah. know if I responded. I'm sorry, I have ADHD, you guys. I got to, I got to go through my DMs. But mm-hmm. someone messaged me and was like, "I just want to let you know, like, I'm a paleontologist, um, and I well, listen to your podcast, and I'm like so excited you'd like to be a paleontologist. I just want to let you know, like." Pretty much, like, we never find fossils. It's mostly, like, dead people. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's awesome! <laughs> like, that's, like, that is even better! Yeah. Um, that's crazy, but it just did make me laugh, where they were like, you're expecting to see something cool, and it's mostly just really sad, and a lot yeah. of digging up dead bodies. I was like, that's psychotic. Um, okay. So Daniel De, De La Kia, a senior associate therapist at Gateway to Solutions in New York City, um, says seeing others engaging in and being rewarded for on-task behaviors often motivates those with ADHD to mimic the behavior. Additionally, people with ADHD often strugg- struggle to regulate their emotions and feel calm. Mm. And having mm. a safe support person alongside them can be helpful and soothing. What was I going to say? But yeah, so ADHD, like mimicking is a huge thing. I, when I was a kid... If someone had like a British accent, oh, yeah. I wouldn't do it consciously, but I would start speaking in a yes. British accent. It's just a way to like show that you are paying attention. So ADHD is to show that you're like listening, you know? Yeah. And so like um, there was this Australian, I got really weirdly good at, um, sorry, this Kiwi like YouTuber. Yeah. And I, I, for some reason I knew how to do like the Kiwi accent. Yeah. But it's just because I was watching her and it just like, so my brain's like copy. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes people will be like, how did you learn this accent? Like, I think even, uh, and I'm, I'm sure if, like, an accent coach listened to me do accents, I'd be like, you're terrible at accents. Yeah. So you can't do any of them. But people would be like, oh, you can do a really good British accent or a New Zealand accent or a Southern accent. And I'm like, all of these are because there was a YouTuber growing up that I watched who had that accent. Like, I can do, like, Zoella, yeah. all those people. I still, it just, like, I, I can talk in that accent because I listened to them do it for years. Yeah. And it just it comes out. And we had a foreign exchange student in, in high school who's from New Zealand. And um, her and I didn't even talk that much, but I feel like I can do a New Zealand accent now because I talked to her a couple times and I would like, I couldn't stop doing it at home Mm -hmm. in the privacy of my own home. (laughs) 
He's also, um, <laughs> wait, what? Liv Harrington, director of clinical operations for virtual team programs at uh, Lightfully Behavioral Health. Body doubling can be helpful for anyone that struggles to stay focused or prefers to pair a pleasant activity with a less pleasant one. For example, Harrington gave is how having a friend over while cleaning your closet can make the job more enjoyable and easier to complete. So people with ADHD have a dopamine deficiency and spending time with others boosts dopamine. This may be part of the benefits received from body doubling. But what happens if you are like, do you think you're an extrovert? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um, no, I, this is actually something I have not unpacked with my neurodivergency. I, since mirroring is a huge thing, I don't know because like it usually, this sounds fake, but it usually depends on the energy of the people yeah. I'm around. Like if people are calm, I'm not going to be like crazy. But yeah. if people like, you ever talk to a very, someone who's very flamboyant, yeah. very energetic, it's almost like that over, like my brain gets overstimulated and, it, and now I'm getting like, yeah, let's yeah. do this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I have no idea. I feel like I'm a really intense introvert. Like I really, which I didn't, I was a kid. I would always be like, I'm an extrovert because I was very, I wasn't shy and mm -hmm. I was very loud. Sorry, I have to burp. Oh no. You, that's gross. Oh no. Okay, it passed. It didn't even happen. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not shy. So I'm an extrovert. But as an adult, I've realized like how much of an introvert I am. I think because I was such an I was so loud and very performative that it was so exhausting for me to be around people. And as an adult, like, I, I'm i the worst friend sometimes. I try to be very loyal, but I don't hang out with friends a lot because I, I'm i like, once a week I can hang out with a friend. And it's, like, a huge event for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, have to get, like, psyched up and, like, go do it. Um, and usually if, like, I go to a party, I have to, like, excuse myself and go to the bathroom and like just sit on my phone in silence for like 45 minutes. And I know everyone's like, she's definitely having diarrhea in there. But I'm like, I would rather you think that than yeah. me have to be out in public talking to people for this hour. And then I can go back in and enjoy it. But like yeah. I, my battery, my social battery is so small. And so I don't think I could have someone come over while I cleaned because I would feel the need to be like, so how have you been doing? You yeah. Know, so that, and then I would just be like, I need you to go. I need you to leave. Yeah. I, thankfully, I don't really think much about what people think of me anymore. Yeah. So, like, if even if I had a friend over, like, I I would be like, they know why I, I invited them over. I was like, I would probably tell them, hey, can you body double? Just bring your computer. And they'll yeah. be like, all right. And then they'll be on their computer. So I don't really feel the need to entertain. I'm really working on that. Yeah. Because I feel like I care so much what people think. Not even in a, oh, I want them to think I'm cool or anything. I think I'm always so afraid I'm being mean to people, which is crazy because I don't think I'm really ever mean to people. Yeah. Like, I think I'm too nice because I'm like so scared and I'll leave these interactions that are so normal or I'll email. I'll have Jordan, my partner, read my email to someone that's like, all right, well, have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to chatting more. And I'm like, does this come off bitchy? And yeah. they're like, what? No, that's like the most normal. Like that looks like Grammarly wrote that, that yeah. email. That's so normal. But even like this last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of people stay with us and I'm so anxious the whole time where I'm like, I feel like they're probably so stressed out because I keep being like, are you having fun? Do you feel cared for? Are you okay? Like, do you need anything? I'm so sorry. I've been like working. They're like, I know you have a job. It's like, okay, I didn't expect you to sit with me the entire time. But I'm just so anxious that they're like mad at me. Yeah. I got to talk it through with my therapist. I had that one time when I used to be a waitress. Um, I would check in on customers way too much. <laughs> and I checked in on this table like way too much. And they saw like earlier that day that I'd been smoking. And when I got to the table, they were like, can you go smoke? And I was like... Yes, I can. Oh. But like, they, I was, no, it was funny. But like, I was just like, um, I am so checking funny. on you too much. That's so funny. I do want to talk about the cleaning of hoarders' homes. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking, you're, you're off. Let's get to, where is that at? <laughs> it's on the next page. Um, SOS. Okay. Okay, cleaning hoarders' homes. Biohazard cleaners slash cleaning companies will post progress of before and after TikToks of hoarders' homes. Some hoarders themselves will track their cleaning process via TikTok. I've definitely watched some of those. Those, oh, are, yeah. those are really interesting. It seems like it helps keep them accountable and their audience provides them with encouragement in the comments. Some cleaning professionals post before and after videos of cleaning hoarders' homes. It seems like the hoarder slash hoarders' family reach out to professionals for these cleanings. Other times a social worker will contact a professional on behalf of the hoarder. On behalf of the hoarder, it seems like the hoarder of their families typically pays for the cost of the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I think I've only um, seen, been inside a hoarder's house once, 
and I um, understand like what happens mentally the to a hoarder, you know, of sort of scarcity mindset. So you do cling to a lot of things. Yeah. But I was very young and I couldn't understand what I was seeing because I there you could not see like three feet in front of you. Yeah. So that must be like a very difficult like living situation. I mean, like I've lived I'm trying to think of a similar difficult living situation. I've lived in an RV. But that's not like the same. But like it but is. It is because it's so small. So even if you have a normal amount of stuff, yeah, you have to like really focus on org. Like we had that in our small house. Now it's organized. But when we first moved in. It, it seemed kind of like a hoarder's house. Everything was clean and organized. But there's just too much stuff for the space. Yeah, I can only imagine like how that in type of environment like affects children because you do need space to develop. And whether that be like physical, like you live in an RV versus like, so it just like. I wonder how stressful that is for children. Oh, yeah. Well, and I think it's, like, hard, too, because it's hard as a... <laughs> Here I go talking about parenting. I literally have never read any article about child development, but I'm about to speak mm-hmm. as though I'm a child development uh, scientist. I feel like as a ch- young child, like, zero to four, it's, like, really important for development to be, like, organized and know, like, oh, this is where my toys are at, and this yeah. is where I eat breakfast at, and this is how we eat breakfast together. I think all of those things are kind of taken away when you're living in a hoarding situation. Mm-hmm. But then as a teenager, I've heard, I've had friends who, like, lived in hoarding situations, and they're like, it ruined my life. Like, I yeah. was, like, I ruined my entire life, and I, because I couldn't have friends over, I, like, wore gross clothes to school like mm-hmm. like it was just a lot of things added up to where it made me unable to like socialize and be confident and then that in turn affected the trajectory of my truly entire life and I'm like that is so devastating yeah I can maybe understand a little bit like I did say like I did not like going walking throughout my house it was very like you know when you have like <laughs> Brittany's gonna watch this and be like shit no like you when you have like a bad roommate Brittany is not a bad roommate at all but like there's someone in the house that like makes you like wholly uncomfortable yeah and so like I had a roommate in college that threw knives at another roommate um that was like I was scared to go outside multiple times you said it like they did it every day oh no but she did get drunk a lot and she was just crazy but like that when there's something wrong with your like living environment it's just totally consuming so I've definitely kept like a shit ton of food in my room or like a shit ton of dirty clothes just because like the fear of like going downstairs and mom seeing like dishes and like uh, you know making fun of me or something I'm like so I understand like just I'm just trying to sympathize with the stressed kids who were raised in a hoarder's home yes yeah 100 percent 100 percent um yeah very hard very very hard um Oh, I misread this. It said benefits, and I thought it was like benefits of being a hoarder. <laughs> I was like, okay, love this different perspective. Um, some some hoarding. Okay, here we go. Some hoarding sufferers have credited reality TV slash hoarders for helping them realize they might have a problem. Provides greater awareness about hoarding as a mental health condition. Helps individuals hoarders, the only ones being helped on TV or in these videos, get rid of excess items and trash. It also helps with the physical biological hazard that their hoarding has created. Mold. For example, Mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Provides hoarders with resources and information. These videos can help them find local cleaning companies, especially biohazard cleaning companies. These videos might motivate hoarders to seek help or attempt to clean their homes themselves. Mm -hmm. But there are criticisms to these types of videos, like uses mental health problems to entertain and shock the public. I would disagree with that. Um, because they do clean it, you know, um, it is shocking initially, but the, it, the reason why you watch cleaning videos is for the end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No one no one just watches the video and it like sees the before and is like, all right, I'm done. This yeah. is gross. Like it's like I mean, there are rude people who comment like, How could you let it get like that? Yeah. And it's like, first off, you don't understand mental health, but that's not on the person creating the content unless they're actively making fun of the person who lives in that situation. Well, and there's never like personal information. And most people's houses look identical. Like for yeah. the most part, a bathroom looks like a bathroom and you could never tell someone else's bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm like, these are people who are struggling so deeply with their space that like there's a lot of embarrassment in their lives in terms of, like, they can't have friends, family, anyone over. Mm-hmm. They can't function. They can't brush their teeth. They can't, like, use the bathroom correct because, like, everything is so intense yeah. in their home. And so I think it is one of those things where any criticisms – and maybe if I read more into it, I would disagree. But I do feel like any criticisms are kind of over, over – are overridden, mm-hmm. overridden by yeah. the positives. Yeah. And I also think, since we did just discuss that – 
they are also hoarders watching these things and they get to see processes and steps like I know that a lot of people when they do cleaning and they talk about like mental health like it's best to divide up the things that you tackle first like yeah. tackle clothes just for the first day go only through clothes through one certain room then get trash and then recycling and then uh, wet messes and then you know that sort yeah. of thing so it's like it actually is very helpful to the and people just, maybe they're like oh I because I feel like so many people are like, there's no way. My, my house is so far past mm -hmm. my ability to clean that it feels truly impossible to clean. And I think it probably would be very motivating to watch someone like complete cleaning a bathroom that looks exactly like yours and be like, oh, like he did it. Like I probably could do it. And it might be one of those scenarios where like after they clean it, they're like, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. And I was able to know that because I watched someone do it, you know? Yeah. It's like gives it gives you hope. I mean, think about like any sort of condition where like people think that they are too far gone to be helped. Not to bring it back to alcoholism, but like, I mean, when you go to AA, like you hear all these stories of just like people are drinking like two handles a day and then they got to a certain point when they were like 56 and they're like, I can never start over. I just I should just die. And then yeah. you see them sober in these places. And sure, it's been a long road, yeah. but it does give hope to like if. A lot. If these hoarders, if these people who have been drinking for thirty plus years can do this, you there was never any hope lost on you. Yeah. Also, yeah. I've become the most annoying friend because after you told me that fact about how ten drinks a week puts you makes in you like makes you not alcoholic, I've been telling every friend I have that, and they'll be like in the middle of drinking, and I'm like, you know, if you have ten drinks a week, you're an alcoholic, and well, they're actually, like, okay, it's All right. ten for men and eight for women. <laughs> Oh, I got a lot of people to call. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say, wait a minute. Wait but a that's minute. medically. Um, okay, I'm not going to. But like, yes. Um, and so it promotes, as people also say that it promotes the idea that a mental illness can be fixed by just a home makeover. It doesn't show the long process of therapy that hoarders must go through. Yeah, but this is a good first step. You know, like if someone isn't again, an alcoholic and they stop getting sober, but they fail to go do the 10 steps, they've still made a very, very massive step. You yeah, know? and I think like you see it on the show orders. A lot of these are not like, they're not claiming to be resolving all these people's issues yeah. in any capacity. But most of the time, they're literally being kicked out of their living situation and are going to be like homeless because they, the people they rent from or the city are being like, you cannot live this way. Yeah. So most of the time, it's just fixing a... A problem that in the moment needs to be resolved and they need help, you know? Yeah, and I think this sort of criticism is like, um, it's just not helpful. Like, it's like, say, I mean, another, like, I guess, branch of criticism you could say is, well, look what's happening to the environment because of hoarders. It's like you are missing the point yeah. so completely that, yes, hoarding and re mass recycling and mass throwing things away is not helpful to the environment, but you have got to get a grip. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, truly, truly. Mm -hmm. And then more criticism by just showing the messy hoarder's room. Some of these TikTok professional cleaners risk dehumanizing the hoarder. Like Kendall said, it's always anonymous unless the person would like to be in the video. <laughs> the person's like obsessed with becoming famous. Yeah. They like keep popping their head and they're like, this is my bathroom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did this. I um, did this big mistake. They're like, mm -hmm. please stop putting yourself in the video. Yeah. And some comments on professional cleaners, hoarder videos can be negative judgmental. But that's that's the commenters just being Man. dickwads. You yeah. I mean, you could post you baking cakes for kittens. And, you know, you well, that does deserve hate because that could kill the cat. Well, cats say <laughs> kitten cakes. And, you know, you have a taste testing and they get kitten safe frosting on their face. And yeah. there's still going to be a comment like, who do, like, well, I mean, you're uh, uh, you're you're contributing to the obesity of cats in America. And yeah. you're like. Sorry, that was a long wind up. I was trying to literally it was a think good, of it. It was a really good impression of how I assume those people talk. <laughs> but they, people just want to complain, so it doesn't matter. This is what I do think is a wee bit unethical. And that oh, is yes. crime scene cleanups. God damn. I understand cleaning up a crime scene because, I mean, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. But yes. You gotta do it. You don't have to film it necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think it's so hard, but it really does a deep dive into a lot of issues because I'm like, well, how can I be a fan of true crime, but then not like this? You know, I think mm -hmm. it's like the same issues. It's like, yeah, but it's really turning this really tragic event into content and it's really, but what I will say about crime scene cleanups, I think there could be a case for 
and I'm not saying I believe yeah. this, but there could be a case. I'm sure people have cases of why true crime is beneficial or there's mm-hmm. pros and cons. I don't really see a pro to showing cleaning up a crime scene. Yeah. So like with the hoarder situation, I don't think people gawk in awe so much at the amount of stuff or trash this person has. However, when it comes to crime scene cleanups, I know that a majority of the views are morbid curiosity and no one's like, oh my God, they really got that full body blood spatter out of the wall. And now yeah. it's, you know, beige eggshell again. It's like, no, they're looking because they want to see the grandma melted into the carpet. Man. Is that a real, when you said that, that was a real yes. thing you saw? Yeah, yeah. That is the most horrifying thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I know. Decomposition is wild. Oh, man. Oh, man. Crazy. I'm also like, how are you? Re- so do they have like a GoPro on their head? How are they recording this? I assume just like with their phone, but like they are, I'm not sure. Because they're using both hands. Because the thought of them doing like one glove off recording while cleaning this yeah. up feels illegal. So videos from professional cleaning companies that deal with the aftermath of a crime scene, usually involving death. Many of these companies specialize in biohazard cleaning and often post their hoarder cleanups, which I don't really mind. Um, but hoarding hoarding does require biohazard cleanup as well. Um, these videos are incredibly popular. The crime scene cleaning topic has 526.4 million views on TikTok. And these videos share cleaning tips. Share cleaning tips? <laughs> well, that's another thing. With the hoarding situation, you're like, well, someone could really relate to this and this could benefit them. Who's being like, how do I clean up my dead grandma? I don't yeah. know what to do. Oh, thank God this video is here to help me realize it was possible. It's yeah. like that's never a situation any person is in. There's no reason to post this. It well, is not helpful. Actually, I imagine if there is a crime in your home, um, and you cannot afford a biohazard cleanup like person, you would need to clean it up yourself. But you wouldn't have... I think they wouldn't... They don't do that for free. You have to pay if, for if someone... someone was mur- if someone was murdered in their house... They would remove the evidence and the body, but you would have to clean that up. <laughs> I'm so shocked. I know. I feel so overwhelmed. I feel like scared. If, if someone breaks into your house and destroys your house, like, and they... You might get the stuff that was stolen from no, insurance. No, right. You have to clean it up. You would have to clean but it so up. So even if like there was like, well, this is just getting dark. But if like you lived in a house and your entire family had been like tortured and it was like a really, it was on all the news. So it was like crazy and really disturbing. You would be in charge of cleaning that up. Or the house may be condemned. That, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense too. Mm-hmm. Oh, good God. I know. So, oh my God. Yeah. It's weird. There's so much you have to think about. Oh, my Um, God. Okay. So so I guess the cleaning tips do help for very specific (laughs) situations. Story times of past crime scene cleanups and the process of cleaning up a crime scene, usually with background info on the crime or theories as to what happened during the crime. Sure, now people are really watching for the cleaning. Yeah. Um, This TikTok genre is described as a combination of a few viral subcultures, true true crime TikTok, clean talk, and horror fandoms. Okay. There's also, which I know you're very passionate about, um, product overload. Product overloads. You take it away. Okay. Product overloads, I gotta say, I've watched a bit of them. I've watched a couple. Videos with product overloads currently have 761.9 million views on TikTok. Product overload videos typically feature high, brightly colored mixtures of different cleaning products being added to a toilet and sink called toilet overload and <laughs> sink overload, mm-hmm. respectively. Creators will use products like Liquid bleach, dishwashing liquid, multi-purpose cleaner, powdered bleach, fabric softener, and foaming fabric softener. Well, that's just stupid. That doesn't that doesn't even make any sense. And foaming cleaning sprays. Creators make videos based on commenters' requests, sometimes based on a certain emoji, names, or color schemes. Creators will also do featured story time audios creating their TikTok. Yeah, they so they do story times over it. Mm-hmm. Kind of what you're talking about, where it'll be like a cleaning video over like duetted with another video so people like can watch yeah old videos it's wild it's bizarre mm, there are criticisms and risks just to briefly go through the list it can reduce the effectiveness of your cleaning product i mean if you're mix- mixing like a base and an as- acid you're going to neutralize both of the yeah. products um you know like too many cleaning pro- products can damage surfaces uh, if you're using bleach on wood, what are you doing, bad, man? Bad. Yeah. And it's so funny because I've, th- I've thought this about other things besides overload videos where it was like viewers enjoy these videos because of the bright colors. And also um, they can get like it'll be themed like an emoji that they've requested yeah. or their name. And I have realized I was like people will do anything to have their name on a video. And yeah. I don't know why. Even if their name is like Emily, something so normal that some people have. I've seen people be like day 706 of me requesting for you to put my name 
carved into this. What you know? There's yeah. all those accounts where all they do is like write people's names. Yeah, and I'm like, why do you want this so bad? <laughs> They're like branding horses. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> You know, it's really? Biscuit is like, no. Or like, Elizabeth. And then they're like, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like Esmeralda. They're like, what? <laughs> Stop. That's, but I'm like, why do people need this so much? Your name, who cares if your name, I've seen all the time where people will do those ones where they like, on their iPad, make colored versions of the name. Yeah. And people are like begging for them to write J- Joseph yeah. into this. And I'm like, just write your name. What yeah. happened in your life where you need this? Um, there are... Products used in the product can over yes. um, can damage the environment. Yeah, it's like people who, I mean, wa- you, there's there's like car safe like well like environment safe soap for like wash your cars, but a lot of people with like batteries or cleaning products do not know how to dispose of them, and you yeah. really need to look it up. And then product overload videos use massive amounts of cleaning products at once, which can damage drains and waterways. Yeah, and then mixing cleaning products can be hazardous and potentially fatal. I have cleaned my shower once without using ventilation, and I got pretty high. I did this. I did a similar thing, and it mm-hmm. was really bad. And I, yeah, yeah, it's really dangerous, and you got to be careful. But at the same time, I always get nervous. I know some people are like, I just mix vinegar and orange peels together, and that's my cleaner. But for some reason, I know they're right. They know way more than I do. But I'm yeah. like, I need a real good Clorox wipe to clean to really get in there and clean, yeah. which like probably is not true. Mm-hmm. Coincidentally, I am writing um, a skit right now, and I was looking up like random cleaning facts that I could finagle yeah. into jokes. Um, like lemon juice can get out stains or yeah. rust on plastic furniture. Vodka can be used on a soft cloth oh, to wow. shine up porcelain, chrome, or glass. Wow. And ketchup can be used on tarnished or corner, uh, corroded brass. Wow. Yeah, my favorite thing is um, I've spilled like a lot of red wine in my day. Um, if you <laughs> get a full pitcher jar of salt and then pour it over the wine and then come back with a moist help (laughs) (laughs) moist towel you can get the red wine out of the carpet i've saved a lot of money at airbnb so (laughs) i just had a stroke sorry i was trying to say all the words fast (laughs) <laughs> you reminded me of a kid of you did you ever do a play when you were younger and like there was one kid who would always forget his lines or he'd say it wrong and every time like 60 times in one line he'd be like well uh, 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 uh sir you would uh, 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 like stop doing that stop oh i keep thinking about this billy eilish interview where she was talking about she was in a talent show with another kid and the kid was trying to sing but every time he would mess up you'd go fuck oh, fuck <laughs> So like she was like, even if you miss the note, just keep going. You're drawing attention Wait, to it's it. Just like the girl who you know the viral video from <laughs> Song Over. She goes, she's trying to sing. And I, <laughs> fuck, fuck, yes. And I, <laughs> fuck it, crash. <laughs> she's like, yeah, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Well, that is all we have to say about Clean Talk. Clean Talk is incredible. I'm pro Clean Talk. I do think it's fascinating where I'm like, what is wrong with our brains where we Mm -hmm. can... Because sometimes I'm like, I've watched people put a bunch of Cheetos into a clear jar over and over and over again. And every time I stay till the end, I want to see it. And I don't know why. It's satisfying. It's very interesting. I think we've really... I think ASMR has really unlocked a weird part of the human brain that I would love to know the science behind. Mm -hmm. But probably will not look up. (laughs) <laughs> research not, until i tell you some misinformation weeks later <laughs> it's exactly but we actually do have a guest oh in the studio god who is it they are from clean talk they're an influencer wow. you might know i bet i do i wish i was doing the interview <laughs> i wish i got to meet him but i, know. I gotta go to the bathroom so. you <laughs> might you Probably gotta go her. unwind because we've been talking way too long yeah i need to go f- sit in the bathroom because this has just been a lot for me but I, please tell her that I wish I, I'm a huge fan, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, well, all right. Well, she'll be here in a couple minutes. And thank you guys so much for being here thus far. And welcome back to the BCC Club. I am joined by Diane Benson. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. So, Diane Benson... Can I call you Di? You can call me Lady Di. Okay, yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a mother of four teenage boys. I got a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old, and then two 17-year-old twins. Okay. And I am a clean talk mom. I started posting videos maybe a year, two years ago, 
because my house is a complete wreck, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything is disgusting. I don't know if you've ever had four teenage boys in your house. No. But it is a nightmare. There is semen on everything. I half the time don't even know when I'm cleaning up. My husband doesn't do anything. He watches NASCAR all day. Mm -hmm. I don't even understand how there can be so much NASCAR to watch if they only do one race ever so often. And my, I, I'm like, are they racing all the time? Because he's watching NASCAR all the time. He doesn't help. The boys don't help. So I have a lot of the cleaning responsibilities. I have all of them. And so I started posting videos. And mm -hmm. they went viral um, because oftentimes I'm cleaning up things that are a bit disturbing. You know, when you've got four teenage boys what you're cleaning up can be alarming to the viewers. So mm -hmm. now that's what I do is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. So that is your clean talk niche. Yes, is cleaning and resetting my house. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that your husband doesn't help considering it's only a lap track. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. He's not an NASCAR racer. He just oh. watches it all the time. There's always a race on, always something he's got to watch. And he sits in his man cave. Mm-hmm. And he watches it, and he doesn't help. And my sons, a lot of people can blame me as the parent and say, well, you didn't raise good kids. I know. I know. I didn't raise good kids. They're little shits. Mm -hmm. I hate my sons. Yes. I love them in a motherly way. But do I regret having them? Yes, I do, Sarah. Mm -hmm. They've made my life hell. It sounds like it. Everything is always a mess. So I started capitalizing off of it. I said, mm -hmm. well, you know what? If I'm going to clean, I'm going to film it. Yes. And I saw other moms doing it, and I started doing it, and people liked what they saw. Mm -hmm. Are your children in the content? No, they're not in the content. They're never around. Yeah. They're always at school, at a friend's house, they're at pra football practice, or they're just in their rooms, and they don't talk to me. Yeah. They don't talk to me. And sometimes I'm grateful because I'm, like, so tired of hearing about Minecraft and twitch streams mm -hmm. and and whatever they've got going on they always say memes to me and i don't know what they are i'm just tired of it yeah and i don't want to come off like a bad mom i love my kids i'm there for them but they are disgusting our house is disgusting you don't even know the things i found soaked into our carpet oh my goodness i've cleaned vomit out of the inside of a piggy bank oh my gosh do you know what that's like saving that for later yeah, I guess they were saving it up. Uh -huh. I had to stick my hand up, you know, the little tiny hole that you get the dollars out of? I had to stick my hand up there and rub it down with the Clorox wipe. That is really fucked up, Sarah. Yeah, did they vomit through the coin slot? They did. Oh, my. For fun. I don't know what type of... They always have a challenge they're doing on mm -hmm. Instagram. Oh, we got a challenge or Facebook or whatever they're doing. We did the challenge. We did the vomit challenge. I'm like, what are you doing? Yes. Do your homework. I'm just, like, tired of it. They didn't have... Kids did not have those issues when I was going to school. Mm -hmm. They weren't doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I guess you don't really find any time to incorporate ASMR into your content with four boys in the house, do you? I do. I do. I'm really passionate about my content. It's mm -hmm. kind of the only time I get to be on my own and really relax and enjoy myself. Yeah. There's not a ton of ASMR, but there is a couple things. Like, for example... I don't know if you've ever lived with four teenage boys. I have not. But their sheets are so gross. Yes. They're hard. Mm -hmm. They turn into almost a cardboard texture. I don't know if it's from the semen, if it's from urine, spit. I don't know what it is. I don't mm -hmm. want to know what it is. But when I put it into the wash, you got to crack it like a like a pixie stick or something. Uh-huh. And put it in the washer. And people like those that noise. Uh -huh. are, are boys spitting in their beds? I don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I try to not ask any questions. Mm -hmm. I've learned that because the, the couple times I've asked questions, when I said, hey, Dawson, why is there a moldy cream cheese rangoon in your sock drawer? Mm -hmm. He looked me in the eyes and he said, fuck you, mom. Mm -hmm. Rotten hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with that. That's really interesting. Have you bought a special mic for cracking semen blankets? Yeah, I bought a mic. I bought a mic on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and now that's on my Amazon storefront, so you can buy it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very dedicated to my Clean Talk account, um, and I'm very proud of it. So, yeah, I bought all the equipment. Good. So what does a typical comment look like on your content? You know what? It's weird because people always are saying, you're a super mom. You're a super mom. Mm-hmm. My boys' rooms never look this way. How do you manage to do all this? Mm -hmm. 
And I feel bad because I'm like, I'm not a super mom. Mm-hmm. My life is a piece of work. Mm-hmm. My life is hell. Yeah. I've got four sons, all teenagers. Yeah. They're rude. They're messy. They're mm-hmm. gross. All their friends are perverts. They say things that I'm like, what? Where did you even find that? I don't know. I'm not a super mom by any means. Mm-hmm. The only time I feel joy is when they go on a field trip and they're gone for a week. Yeah. Not because I don't love them, but because, and I can't express that enough. Like I love my sons. Like I love my kids. Mm-hmm. But when they're on a field trip, I finally have time to kind of catch up on chores and do all that stuff. Sometimes I've gone to the school and I've said, hey, hey, why don't we do a field trip? I found this science museum across the country that I think the junior class would love to go to. Yeah. And then before you know it, Sarah, I'm out on the street, the corner of the high school selling brand muffins mm-hmm. to raise money for this school field trip because I would do anything to get them out of the house. Yeah, like ask the principal for extra detention. Exactly. I'd say they probably did something bad. And you know what? My sons, most of the time they did. Yeah. Most of the time they did. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, have you, um, I'm not sure you consider it a crime scene, definitely a biohazard, but have you ever thought about cleaning up a crime scene for free? I have cleaned up a crime scene, basically. Oh, really? I mean, a biohazard for sure. Mm-hmm. My son, my middle son, who I love, he's the sweetest of, of the four, him and his friends did a 24-hour Twitch stream. Wait, I'm sorry, the middle son of four? He's the... Uh, he's the 16-year-old, so there's 15, 16, and then two 17-year-olds. Okay. He's 16. Okay. He's sweet. He's nice. And I love him so much. I love all my sons. But he and his two friends did a Twitch stream. They did a 24-hour Twitch stream. Why? I don't know. I guess Mm. they don't want to go to college. They want to be streamers. So they go into their room for 24 hours. I try to be supportive, Sarah. So Mm. I went on and I watched it. When I tell you for 24 hours... I was the only viewer on this stupid (laughs) Twitch stream. I don't know who they're doing this for, why they're doing it. When I, when the friends left and I came into that room, my son was at football practice and I was cleaning up this room. It was the most disgusting thing. And the, the carpet was covered in something wet. And I called my son and I said, what, why is the carpet wet? He said, well, we did the, we did the Listerine challenge. Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't ask questions, Sarah. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask questions because I'm not, I don't even want to know what the Listerine challenge is. Yeah. And I guess I didn't see it on the stream because I fell asleep like six times. It was the most boring thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. I understand that. What are some long-term solutions or short-term solutions um, that you would give to viewers to try to help maintain a clean home? Don't have kids. Uh, Yes. Don't have kids. I see on TikTok, Sarah, sometimes young, single women posting, oh, I'm cleaning my house. I'm like, what are you cleaning? Mm -hmm. You don't have any kids. What are you cleaning? They're dusting the insides of their self-help books, Mm -hmm. I guess. Because before I had kids, my house looked great. Yeah. That's no feat. The things I find now, having kids, it's impossible to keep up with it. I've seen things. Mm-hmm. I've seen things that a human being shouldn't see. Mm-hmm. So that would be my, that would be what I would say. Okay. Do not have children, guys. Don't, because, and if you do already have children, your house is just going to look like shit. Mm-hmm. Your house is going to look like shit. Mm-hmm. So what are your favorite cleaning hacks? You know, uh, let me think. I've definitely got a few. Oh, you know what I do? So, and this is a really good hack. We don't have pets because I'm not doing pets. I said mm-hmm. I already got four pets. I've already got four dogs living in my house. Yeah. Those are my sons. And I love my sons. Yes. And I need to make that clear, Sarah. I love mm-hmm. my sons. Yeah, you're a dog mom. I'm, I'm a dog mom. I wear a hat. I have a cup. I say dog mama. I love my dog. Sorry, my sons. Mm-hmm. But they smell. Yeah. And I don't know why because... And you know what? It's so bizarre. Even if a man is just sitting there breathing, Mm -hmm. for some reason, whatever room he's in smells like shit. I don't know what it is. They smell so bad. I walk into their rooms. There is a whip. I just cleaned it yesterday. They were at school all day. They come home. They've been in there five minutes. Why does your room smell like this? (laughs) Yes. So they have these things you can attach to kitty litter boxes. Mm Mm-hmm. You put one on the litter box, and it's supposed to give a good aroma around the litter box. I bought probably, I buy them in bulk on Amazon. I probably put 60 per room. 
hide them. They don't even know they're there. There's one in the sock drawer. There's one in the bathroom. There's one in the toilet. Mm -hmm. There's one on the door. There's one on the headboard of the bed. It is everywhere, and it doesn't fix the problem, but it definitely makes it better. It'll definitely make your eyes water. Oh, yeah. And all of them are like, do I have allergies? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretending I don't know. But I'm like, yeah, well, you have a bunch of cat litter box fragrance in your in your room. <laughs> yes. Um, have you ever accidentally overloaded a space with chemicals? Oh, my Lord. I did. Sarah. <laughs> I did one time because so my, I told you my husband has a man cave. Yes. I don't know why, first of all. He doesn't have any friends. Yes. Why does he have, we spent uh, so much money mm -hmm. decorating this man cave. He's the only one in the house who gets a separate room for him to be alone. Yeah. I'm like, why? Like, why do you, why are you owed this man cave? Mm -hmm. He is this man cave. We're not allowed to go in it because I guess I'm so annoying. I'm the, I, he needs time away from the ball and chain. I go down there. I guess the boys had gotten gone down there when they were like 9 10 11 they loved slime they had all this slime they wanted slime 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 and i was like okay anything mm -hmm. to get them to shut up yes i go down it looks like they had made a competition to see how much slime they could get in the carpet i panicked i started sarah i started having a panic attack oh, wow. because i knew my husband was going to get pissed at me mm -hmm. and i don't like when he gets pissed because then he talks to me and yeah. i don't want to talk to him because yeah. we ha i mean we don't connect in the way that we used to mm -hmm. Well, then so, um, maybe the man cave is mutually beneficial. That's why I allow it. That's yeah, why I let yeah. it keep going. But I'm like, where's my woman cave? Mm -hmm. Where's my wife cave? Yeah. You could watch NASCAR in the living room. But where am I going to have panic attacks at? Where am I going to cry at? Mm -hmm. That I have to do in the garage. And that's just dehumanizing. So I panicked. All this slime is on the carpet of the floor. And I go and get Clorox. I'm crying. I'm panicking. I can't breathe, Sarah. Mm -hmm. I get two things of Clorox. I'm shaking them like it's freaking confetti, okay? Yeah. I'm shaking them around the whole thing. And I probably dumped, I mean, gallons of Clorox powder onto the floor of the man cave. So then the man cave flooded. We had a flood. Oh, wow. In 2012. Mm -hmm. And... The mixture of the debris and the Clorox and the water, it filled our house with what they called, the police called a deadly gas. Yeah. So now if you lived in the city of Georgia that we were in uh -huh. between the year 2012 and 2014, you can get $100,000 from the government because of the amount of gas that toxic gas we released into the environment. Oh, my gosh. And I felt bad, Sarah, but mm. I... You know what? We never rebuilt the man cave. And so part of me always kind of was like, I'm glad that happened to yeah. show my husband, you know. Yeah, I always have to be in the living room with these idiots, my mm -hmm. sons. And I love my sons. I love my sons. It's... But I just wish I could take them by the neck and just like throw them around. And yeah. I wish they were dead sometimes. <laughs> Is that bad to say? No, you can make a video out of it. Yeah. I know, buy, buy a hazard cleanup, <laughs> yes. crime scene cleanup, yes. done by the criminal. You get four separate videos in the yeah, series. Yeah, exactly, exactly. My four sons, I love my sons, but no, they're just terrible. They're mm -hmm. terrible. I hate them. <laughs> thank you so much, Diane, for being of on the pod. Of course, thank you for being here. You know, it's so hard having kids and cleaning, and I just love to be able to share my cleaning as a mom tips with the world. Mm -hmm. And we do appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Do you have any kids? Um, no. Make sure to keep it that way. I will. I'm barren. All right. Well, thank you, Diane. Of course. Of course. Thank you so much. The Big CC Club. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching the BCC Club. Mm -hmm. This has been Clean Talk with your hosts, Kendall Andra and Sarah Shower. We put out new episodes each week, and they're available on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Like. On YouTube, because mm -hmm. we have a we have a new episode every single Wednesday. And yes. we would just love if you would be here every single week. Mm -hmm. And we're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get podcasts. We are also on TikTok and Instagram, so follow yes. our accounts. Yes, 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 yes. But we will see you guys next week. All right, bye. Have a great week. Bye.